Hi everyone, welcome back to Art of the Part. In this video, we're going to continue on with our conversation of multi-op programming in Mastercam using the Yield Pop Topper case study as reference. Now, in the last video, we completed and left off on first operation, and we covered a handful of topics. More specifically, we took a look at the planes and which plane to use for which operation, as well as the levels and how to toggle on and off the different components that we brought in from SolidWorks assemblies. And then we also looked at the Tool Manager, which is located inside of the Toolpaths tab. So when we click on it, we get this window that we can import a tool library and copy and paste it into the machine. And we use these tools for the toolpaths that we might be familiar with, like face milling or contouring, drilling, and chamfering. But we spent some time and took a look at a new toolpath, which was the 2D Dynamic Mill. And the 2D Dynamic Mill is an extremely powerful toolpath in the sense that it can make quick work of any finishing or roughing operation by just putting in uh, some simple parameters like the extents of the material that we want to be cutting uh, if we're going to be approaching the material outside or inside as well as uh, any uh, finished material or avoidance geometry that we have to keep an eye out for when we're milling so we don't gouge the part. So that said I'm going to continue on with this video uh, with second operation and I'm going to show you another really powerful toolpath that will be helpful for when we want to create our stock material for our second operation. So what I'm going to do first here is I'm actually going to collapse uh, some of these folders in my uh, feature manager here or my operations manager and I would just want to make sure again that I'm at the bottom of my uh, tree so if you don't see the red arrow down here just make sure that you click that red arrow a handful of times and that you're down at the bottom and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new level so I'm going to go over here to levels and hit the plus button just like what we did with the wireframe uh, level and I'm going to title this op one finish and what I'm going to do with this level is I'm going to create a graphic or a mesh file for the finish operation that we left off on uh, when we had verify for operation one. So again, you'll notice that there is zero entities attached to the op one finish. And then we can hop back over here to the toolpaths tab. And just make sure before you do that uh, that you see the green check mark next to op one finish uh, to uh, verify that you are on that correct uh, level. And then we'll hop over here to toolpaths. And then I want you to get comfortable because this is going to be helpful during this process uh, with turning on and off toolpaths, uh, especially when you have multiple machine groups running. You don't want to see both toolpaths from both machine groups. But as well as, you know, if you have a lot of different uh, operations in one uh, single uh, group, that you can turn them on and off as you need. So if you click on toolpath group one, they're all going to be selected and you're going to see a little green check mark next to uh, these file folders. And then there's this wave that's next to the ghost that you can click to toggle on and off your different toolpaths. So I'm going to just toggle them off currently. And then one thing that I want to do as well is just click on toolpath group one because it'll make this uh, easier to explain. But when you click on verify, this is where we left off on in the last video. And you should see something that I'm going to speed this up. And then I'm going to verify and do my color loop. So we want to see a stock model for second operation that looks something like this. And I'm going to generate this graphic and then create a 3D geometry mesh that can be used for the uh, stock afterwards. So I'm going to hit the X here. And then again, uh, make sure that your toolpaths are deselected and that you're at the bottom of your tree. And then we're going to go over here to stock model. So you click on stock model drop down and then click on stock model itself. So when we click on the stock model itself, it's going to ask us, give this window, say, hey, uh, what material do you want to set up in the stock definition? And then what operations do you want to include uh, to mill away or uh, take material away from this stock? So inside stock definition, I'm going to name this the same name that I gave for the level, uh, which was op one finish. And this isn't really going to matter too much, but you can actually give a color to the stock that you're going to create. Um, I just like to, you know, put a bright color so it's easily visible uh, and I can differentiate between my finished part and my uh, stock material here, but it won't matter when we actually create the stock material itself. So go ahead and make it like pink or yellow or something. Hit the green check mark. Uh, this area down here is just going to ask you to define uh, some parameters uh, or geometry for the stock. Um, as long as we set that up in the first operation, which we did to mill first operation, we should be able to select stock setup, and that's going to pull all of that uh, 
geometry and dimensions into the stock uh, itself. So we're going to click on stock setup. You're going to see it's got our coordinates as well as our uh, dimensions for the stock. And then we're going to go here to source operations, which is the next option down. And I just have to choose or select what operations are going to project against that stock material. So in this instance, we're going to select the toolpath group one. So all these uh, file folders are going to get a check mark next to them. And I want to see uh, something a little bit more accurate than a 5000th tolerance. You can obviously play around with this dependent on what kind of geometry you're making or how fast your computer runs. But for me, I'm just going to make this 1000 because I want to see a little bit more accurate uh, toolpath uh, generated on my stock here. So then I'm going to click the green check mark. And we're going to see exactly what I was talking about, which was the end result of our verify. So now uh, this is a this is considered toolpath. It's not like a 3D mesh or any kind of solid geometry that I can reference quite yet, but it's almost there. So I can toggle this on and off just like how I did in the previous steps with my other toolpaths by using this uh, these waves, which is going to be helpful because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually create a mesh from this and then turn it off and then like projected it into a level. So what we'll do is you want to make sure again that you have this stock model selected. There's a little check mark next to it, as well as if you're in the levels that your op one is selected for the level. And then you'll come over here to stock model once again, and then you're just going to convert this stock model to a mesh. So we're going to convert to mesh and it's going to look like nothing really happened, but let's go ahead and turn off or toggle the display for our stock model in the toolpaths and you'll see that there's actually a 3D mesh model that was generated underneath it that is going to now be located on level one. So I can actually use this as solid geometry for reference in my second operation for its starting stock. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go here to uh, wireframe and activate that level. And then you can see that you can toggle on and off, you know, the yield pop topper as well as the op one finish. So I can turn that off. I can see, you know, the yield pop topper. I can turn it back on, turn this off. And then you can see the represented model at the end of the verify or what we created in that toolpath stock model. And then we generated a 3D mesh for it. So I'm going to just uh, turn off or uh, not display the yield pop topper and I'm just going to show my op one finish. It's just going to make this process a little bit easier for op two. So let's go ahead and jump back over here to toolpaths and I'm going to create a new machine group for op two. So we'll go over here to machine and then we'll hit the drop down menu of the mill and then we're going to choose default just like what we did before. And just what we were talking about in the last video, uh, Mastercam doesn't know if you're going from one op to another op in the same machine or multiple different machines. So you are going to have to set this up just like how we set it up in the first video. So the first thing that I like to do is go in here to properties and I can set my stock setup up. So I'll click on stock setup. And before we had to click on that bounding box and we selected on the finished part and then gave it a, gave it a sense and where it was origin was going to be located. However, in this uh, example for uh, the second operation, and I've actually created my stock model that I want to see, is I'm going to actually select uh, this add from selection. So now I have the ability to select 3D geometry as my stock setup. So I'm going to click that, it's going to turn red, and then I'm going to hit the green check mark. And you're not going to really see anything quite yet, just trust me, uh, when we start actually applying some toolpath, you'll see how this is going to work out. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, import our tool library, and then we can start applying that toolpath. So go over here to toolpaths, we'll go to the tool manager. We've got nothing in here right now, so we'll select from a different library. Just look for that DMU50 list that we were talking about before, or using before. Hit open, and like I said before in the last video, you just got to select all this uh, with a bounding box, and then hit the up arrow so it copies it into the machine itself. And then we'll hit the green check mark. Okay. Now, I actually want to reorientate myself to the second operation top plane, and then I'm actually going to turn off this, uh, this level and turn on all of my different work holding levels that I imported from SOLIDWORKS assemblies. So, let's go over here to levels, and I'm going to turn on my yield pop topper, and I'm going to turn off op one finish, so I just want to see that. 
And then I'm going to uh, turn on all these other components here, uh, which are going to be the five axis vice and riser. And this might look a little confusing, but again, remember like I was talking about in the last video, uh, we just have to go here to planes and we're going to choose or create a new plane for op two top, uh, select the G as well as the WCS, C and T. And Hey, that looks a lot better, right? So now we don't have it interfering with our tool paths. Okay. So now, I'm going to start creating some toolpaths. So let's go over here to toolpaths. Uh, one thing too that uh, I forgot to mention is uh, let's just go ahead and rename this op, uh, this machine group that we just created as op2. Uh, that's just going to make it easier um, to see operation from that op2. So I have op1 up there and then op2 right there. Okay, now let's create some toolpath. Uh, and the way that I'm going to approach this is I'm going to create a face mill going across the top. And then I'm also going to do a finish uh, chamfer and then a uh, chamfer drill there. And that should finish up op two for us. So pretty simple stuff and nothing that we haven't covered before in the past. So let's go ahead and start off here with the face mill. And it's in the 2D two path, uh, toolpath gallery. So I'll grab that. And then I'm going to go over here to wireframe and I will go ahead and select the XY top face of this wireframe. I'll just hit this uh, red fast forward button here and that's going to select all those. And again, just make sure that it's not going down. It's just on the top uh, level there. And then we're going to hit the OK. And then we'll go to tools. We will scroll up and find our three inch face mill. And we'll title that three inch face mill. And then we'll go over to the cut parameters. We'll make sure that this is going one pass and then we'll have to set up some of the other parameters that we did in the last video, make it like 25%, 25%, stock to leave on the floor, want it to be a finished pass, we'll leave that at zero. Depth cuts, if we open up our uh, Excel spreadsheet again, uh, we see that our depth pass is uh, 60 thousandths, so just go and make that 0 0.0625, and then we'll keep the tool down because we don't want it to take a pass, come back up, take another pass, come back up, we want it to take a pass, go down, take a pass, go down so on and so forth. Okay, linking parameters. Make sure that all these values are set to absolute, 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 and absolute. Top of stock, this is like a repeating number because it's being generated from the stock model mesh that we created. So it's not perfectly accurate. If you wanted to, you can go and click on top of stock and then you can select the top corner of the wireframe. And then the depth, we will just make that the top of the part. Just make sure that that is reading zero. Once again, uh, a good way to check if you are on the correct uh, uh, level, or sorry, uh, plane, is if you go over here to planes and you see op two, op two, op two. If you still see op one, op one, op one, you can go in here to the uh, work, uh, uh, sorry, uh, plane manager, and then you can set your WCS by selecting on you know op two if it's still reading op one, and then you'll hit the green check mark if you got to. Uh, do that and you can apply it by hitting this fast forward button on those to apply the next uh, next plane. Okay, but if you still see op2, 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 that should be good. And we'll hit the green check mark. And I have perfect tool path projecting there. And now let's go ahead and check against that stock model that we just set up. So if you go ahead and select op2 and we go over here to the verify, take a look at that. It's exactly like that stock model that we left off on uh, with op1 verify. And now I can use it as reference for op2. So I'm going to pull this down and then see if the toolpath is projecting the way I want it to. So I'll actually slow this down a little bit and then hit the play button. Look at that. We got rid of that little step there and we're just left with the finished part. So now all we have to do is add a chamfer break on that edge as well as a drill chamfer in the center of that hole. Okay. So let's go ahead and click X on the verify, just close out of that. And then we're going to go into the 2D gallery again, and we'll drop that down and we'll find the model chamfer. And then I have to uh, select my chain geometry. So I'll click on that and then uh, make sure that that face isn't selected. We're going to use the loop only here. And like we talked about before in the last video, we want to make sure that we're cutting uh, in a climb mill fashion. So we're going clockwise around the part. Uh, so make sure that that arrow is going around and pointing to the right if you're on the top face there. Hit the green check mark, and then we'll go over to tool. We'll find our chamfer cutter, and we'll just name this uh, chamfer edge. 
Okay, cut parameters. I just got to give some depths of my widths. And so 0 0.015625, we'll do the same thing. So about 15 thousandths, 0 0.0125. And then we'll do nothing in the depth cuts, nothing with lead in, lead out, that's fine. Linking parameters, we will leave the same. And again, look at your planes and make sure that you have op2, op2, op2. If you got to change it, go into that uh, the plane manager. And green check mark. Okay, we see toolpath there, that looks good. And then uh, we'll finish up here with a uh, chamfer drill. So if you hit the drop down menu of the gallery in 2D, we're gonna look for hole making and look for chamfer drill. Select on chamfer drill. And then we are going to uh, select that hole. So we'll go down here, select the center of that hole or the edge of that hole rather. Uh, it's gonna give us the diam diameter of 0.213, green check mark. Uh, and I'll find the 12, mil, uh, 12 millimeters uh, spot drill, and I'll just name this uh, chamfer drill. Okay, and then stock, we can leave that. Cut parameters, we just got to give a value of that uh, chamfer. So we're going to give 0 0.03125. Nothing in these. We're going to go to linking parameter, absolute, absolute. Okay, and then we are going to hit the, or check our planes first. Still reading, okay, and then the green check mark. Okay, so let's go ahead and verify these three toolpaths to finish up second operation. So let's click on tool, uh, sorry, op two, and then we'll go up here to verify once again. And let's go ahead and turn on our uh, work holding because um, it makes sense to check if you're going to gouge anything, especially when you have a second operation running here. So you can click on this work piece in this uh, home tab. So you can click on work piece and you can actually see all of those other components that we brought in with uh, the SolidWorks assembly. And then I'll go ahead and hit play here. Okay, so that looks good. I'm going to turn off my work piece because it's actually including the uh, finished model that I brought in for the old pop topper. I can toggle that, and that's exactly what I want to see for a finished part. So I have chamfers on both sides. Uh, I got a chamfer on each hole, or each side of the hole. And looks like we're good to go for second operation. So let's go ahead and save this out. And then we'll go and continue on in the next video, and we'll actually mill the uh, pocket for these two uh, soft draws. So. Again, just save it out, and that should complete second operation.